All right, you guys, let's start talking about chapter 2.4, which is going to be measures of variation. So last week we talked about central tendency, and that included the mean, the median, and the mode. And this week we're going to talk about the range, deviations, variance, and standard deviations. All right, so what is the range? The range is probably the simplest to get. It's the difference between the maximum and minimum data entries. All right, um, you've probably uh, have already done this a little bit, all right? It is, the, your data has to be quantitative. So what do I mean by quantitative? Always, you guys see the root there of quantity. Our data has to be numerical, all right? And so again, what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our maximum value and we're gonna subtract our minimum value and get our range. All right, so let's look at an example. A corporation hired 10 graduates. The starting salaries for each graduate are shown. Find the range of the starting salaries. All right, well, of course, these are starting salaries in thousands of dollars. Um, all right, so we're looking here. We want to find our minimum value, and we want to find our maximum value. All right, so the easiest way to see that, especially when we start getting large data sets, is, in fact, to order the data. All right, so here we've ordered it from least to greatest. All right, and so it's easy to see that our minimum is 37, our maximum is 47. We're going to subtract these values and get 10. So the range of starting salaries is 10 or $10,000. All right, the next thing we want to think about is deviation. All right, this is just the difference between a data entry X and the mean of the data set. All right, and if we want to think about a population, remember that the mean of the population is our letter mu. All right, so if we want the deviations, we'll just take our data entry x and subtract mu. However, if it's a sample data set, then our sample mean, remember, is x bar. So we'll take our data entry x and subtract our sample mean or x bar. All right, let's go back to our same example here. All right, let's find the deviation of the starting salaries. All right, well, first, we need to determine the mean starting salary. All right, is this a sample or is this a population? Well, this is a population, first of all, because these represent all the 10 graduates that the corporation hired. Okay, it's not a subset of the graduates that they hired. It's all 10 of them. So we're looking at mu here, and how do we calculate the average? Well, we add up all our values and divide by 10, and we get 41.5, or 41,500. All right, and so here is a table where you can see I've calculated the deviations for each salary. All right, so let's see, grab my pen. All right, so for 41, what do we do? We take 41 minus mu, and we get negative 0.5. All right, do the same for 38. We take 38, subtract mu, and we get negative 3.5. Okay, again, let's take a larger one. Let's look at 45. All right, data entry of 45, we take 45, subtract mu, and this time we get positive 3.5. All right, notice that when you add up all the deviations, you get zero. This is always going to happen if you did this correctly. So every time you sum all of your deviations, you will get zero. All right, let's move on and talk about variance. All right, the population variance all right, is called sigma squared. All right, this is the lowercase Greek symbol for sigma. All right, and what is sigma squared? Well, it's we're going to sum. All right, so again, that's what capital sigma means. What are we going to sum? What are we going to add up? We're going to add up the deviations from the mean and square them. Okay, so get the deviations. In other words, the squared deviations from the mean. We're going to add them all up and divide by capital N. What's capital N, guys? That's our sample size. Okay, and if we want the population standard deviation, 
which is something we're going to be working with a whole lot more. It's just called sigma, all right? And in other words, it's the square root of the population variance, okay? So this is just this population standard deviation is just the square root of the population variance. Now, before you guys start going cross-eyed seeing all these crazy symbols, keep in mind, I am not going to be asking you for these formulas, all right, in, in terms of memorizing them. There are ways I could ask you to use them on the exam, but more than, more than likely, any question about standard deviation or variance from me, I'll be asking you to do something in Excel, um, or you could use your TI calculator. But th that will be included in the tutorials later on. Okay, so if we want to do this by hand, how are we going to find the population variance and standard deviation? Well, first, we need the mean. We have to get started by finding mu. Once we have the mean, we're going to get the deviation, all right? So the difference from the entry to the mean, we're going to get the, this deviation for every data point, all right? Then we're going to square each of these deviations. We're going to add them up, all right? And this is one of those where I want you guys to be familiar with this symbol. I mean, this is something that we know that's the sum of the squares, all right, so the sum of the squared deviations with x, all right, oftentimes it's called SSX. All right, and once we have the sum of the squared deviations, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to divide it by our sample size, and that's going to give us our population variance, right? So again, you get your, you get your, sum of the squared deviations, you add up all your squared deviations, and then you divide that by your sample size and that gives you your population variance. And then when we want the population standard deviation, it's very simple guys, just square root that population variance. Okay, now let's talk, let's go back to this formula real quick here. Notice how we're getting to our answer. We're taking these deviations and we're squaring them. We're squaring every single one of them. So what do you think that tells us about the sign of all of these numbers? Well, because they're squared, they're going to be positive, right? So we're adding up all these positive numbers and we're dividing by our sample size, which better be a positive number. So this sigma squared is always positive, all right? You're never going to have a situation where what's inside the square root is negative and you get a complex number. No, the population variance, and this actually goes for a sample too, but the variance and the standard deviation are always positive. All right, let's go through an example here. A corporation hired our 10 graduates. Let's find the population variance and standard deviation of the starting salaries. All right, let's go through this by hand. And again, I'll be showing you how to do this with your TI calculator as well as in Excel. All right, so recall from earlier, uh, we've already found mu. That was 41.5. So what do we need to do now? Well, now we need our deviations. And don't get cross-eyed or blinded by this table yet. We're stepping through it slowly. All right, we know that mu is 41.5, so for each entry, I'm getting the deviation, which we've actually already done. That was the previous example. All right, now what am I going to do with each of these deviations? I'm going to square them. All right, so I take negative 0.5 and I square it, and I get positive 0.25. I take negative 3.5, I square it, and I get 12.25. Once I do this for all my data points, I'm going to add them up. And when I add them up, I get 88.5. All right, so again, get your deviations, square them, add them up, and now we have this number 88.5. What are we going to do to that number? You guessed it, we got to divide by n. All right, we've got to divide by our sample size. All right, and that gives us a variance of roughly 8.9. 
right? What about our standard deviation? Well, we're going to square root. We're going to square root our variance, and we get a standard deviation of approximately 3. Okay, so again, how do we interpret this? The population standard deviation is about three or three thousand dollars. All right, let's run through how it changes when we're dealing with a sample and not a population. Well, our letters change in right. We've got little s squared. We're no longer dealing with the Greek letter sigma squared. We have a little s squared. Instead of having the mu, we now have x bar, our sample mean. And instead of having capital N, our population size, we have little n, which is our sample size. And notice here, we've got to subtract 1. OK? So, and this is an error correcting measure, guys. That's why we subtract 1. It's not something you really need to worry about as to why, other than uh, that's just an error correction. All right, so uh, if we want the sample standard deviation, what are we going to do to the sample variance? The same darn thing we did with the population. We're going to square root our variance. All right, let's find the mean of the sample data set. All right, so again, the stepping through how to find this, and you're gonna, you're, your life's on repeat here. It's going to seem a whole lot like finding that population variance by hand. All right, so we get our mean, our sample mean. We add up all our data and divide by our sample size. We're going to find the deviation of each entry again. So we take the x value, each x value or, or data entry, subtract the sample mean. We're going to square each of these deviations. We're going to add them all up. All right, so again, we're getting the sum of the square deviations of x. And then we're going to divide by n, little n minus 1, or the sample size minus 1. And then when we want the sample standard deviation, what are we going to do? We're going to do exactly like we did with the population, and we square root our variance. All right. So rather than, again, getting cross-eyed with all these letters, let's just run through an example. All right, so here we're going to say these are the starting salaries for the Chicago branches of a corporation. All right, the, corp the corporation has several other branches, so we're just going to use this Chicago branch as a, a representation of a sample. All right, so now we're dealing with a sample. All right, what are we going to do? Notice, guys, this is the same, the same numbers we've been using, except now we're calling it a sample. All right, so we're going to do exactly like we did before. All right, we take each data entry, subtract x bar. All right, and that should not be mu. That should be x bar. That should not be mu. That should be x bar. All right, so we're taking each data entry subtracting x bar or our sample average and getting our deviation what do we do with this deviation we are squaring it all right so for each of our data entries or salary levels all right we are getting the square deviation okay now what do we do we do exactly like we did before once we have these square deviations we're going to add them up okay and again, we have 88.5. All right, this is the sum of the squared deviations in x. What are we going to do with this number? Don't say divide by 10. Remember, we have to subtract 1. So we're actually dividing our 88.5 by 9, not 10. All right, and so we get a sample variance of 9.8. Okay, and if we want the sample standard deviation, we are just going to square root that sample variance, and we get a sample standard deviation of about 3.1 or $3,100. All right, let's talk about using technology. All right, I'm going to show you first in the lecture here just what your answer screens are going to look like, so where your answers are, and I'll actually run through it in a in the tutorials of how to go about doing this, what your input should be. So here's sample office rental rates for Miami Central Business District 
Okay, let's use either, well, I'm going to show you what uh, a TI-8384 as well as what Excel would look like. All right, so here on the left, this is what your output on an 83 or 84 will look like. Notice here we see x bar, all right? This, this is reading the sum of the x's, the sum of the x's squared. All right, we have sx, all right, which is going to be our standard deviation, okay? So here, x bar, our sample mean, sx, our sample standard deviation. All right, and similarly here in Excel, all right, when we get these descriptive statistics out as output, we will be able to see exactly what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. The key for you guys, and you can also see we get the range, all right, as well as our max and min values with Excel. The key for you guys is not going to be um, overcomplicating this and trying to figure out what, say, kurtosis and skewness is, all right? When we're working in Excel, all right, we're going to get a lot more output often than we need, and so you're going to be able to just need to be able to, to see here, well, just what the mean is, what the median is, the mode, the standard deviation we've talked about, the sample variance we've talked about, the range, the max, the min, all right? And then down here, the count, this would be little n for a sample or capital N for a population. All right, lastly here, let's talk a little bit about what the heck standard deviation is for us, why it matters. In terms of all of our variation measures, so we've talked about range, deviations, variance, and standard deviations, the standard deviation is the one that's going to be the most important to us. All right, it's going to be the one we use the most. Think about it. Let's think about the range. The range is just a difference between our maximum value and our minimum value. All right, it's like the difference between the maximum test score and the minimum test score. It doesn't really tell us how all the students are scoring in between them, okay? Um, the deviation, well, the deviation is positive or negative. It doesn't really help us in terms of making sense for, again, how our data is distributed, all right? The variance, well, the variance isn't helping us because it's the squared, all right? It's, it's the deviation squared. That, again, that's not helping us because it doesn't, it's not really something we can interpret or make sense of. But the standard deviation, we can interpret, all right? It tells us how our data is distributed around the mean, how it deviates around the mean, all right? So let's look at these three pictures here. All right, here's an example where the standard deviation is zero. All right, why? Because everything is at the mean. All of our data is at x bar, which is 5. Here we get a, a standard deviation of 1.2. Notice we're kind of symmetric around the mean. We have the majority of our data here at the mean, and then it kind of just dies off here next to it. Okay, now here we see a sample standard deviation that's our largest. It's 3.0. Well, why is that? That's because all the data is pretty far away from our mean of 5. Okay, so think about it this way if it were test scores. All right, no standard deviation would be everyone scores a 70. Um, a, a medium or, or let's say a medium moderate standard deviation would be if the majority score is 70 and we have some B's and a few A's and some D's and maybe a few F's, okay? That would be a moderate standard deviation. And what would be a crazy standard deviation is if our mean is 70 and we have everybody in the class either scoring 100 or a 40. All right, that would give us a crazy standard deviation. 